just telling me he didn't, he didn't know we were going to do that one. Ooh, oh, no, he was like, ooh. Because <laughs> I'm wiping the sleep out of my eye. That's right. Ooh, this is a good morning. Amen. Yeah, it is. I'm feeling it. I'm noticing it's taking me longer to wake up in the morning because it's darker longer. Has anyone noticed that? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's going to get worse. <laughs> but it's worse before it gets better. Um, well, that's what they say. <laughs> Come to the light.
Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's right. We're in a recovery. Um, uh, Ron and I yesterday had a, a really enlightening afternoon. Uh, we both uh, attended a city team graduation in uh, Three Crosses in uh, Castro Valley, <coughs> and uh, we witnessed 13 people graduating from the city team program. And uh, um, matter of fact, we sang the same song yes yesterday, uh, "Come as You Are." And uh, one of the things we definitely recognize: we come as we are, but we don't have to leave the way we came. We we have through Christ an option to be relieved of our struggles, and that's definitely what City Team is doing. And I'm very proud to have uh, been able to participate and witness that yesterday. It was like uh, R&R &R Friday, except that we had 13 graduates, and each one of them came up and, and talked about, a put a little bit about their life, and, and it was amazing because uh, I welled up a couple of times. Uh, two of the graduates were women, and uh, their stories were incredible. Yeah. And they graduated, and they're like a whole different life. And one of the things that we also uh, recognize in this graduation and whenever we come to new phases in our life, uh, we have to realize that we're going to make mistakes along the way and we're going to fail. Don't let those failures <coughs> take you down. And um, um, one of the things that I mentioned yesterday was that uh, this is where the rubber hits the road. Actually, everything that you've been experiencing for the last year uh, through the City Team program, um, now you have to put into effect because now you're moving on. And uh, it's difficult to do that. Um, anyway, here we go.
think you're all familiar with this one.
words of that, uh, just take a moment just to... I never know, knew how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. We were purchased for a price, and it was a high price. Lord the Father sacrificed his son for us, and it's just, what a blessing. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Tom and Ron. It's Ron and Tom. I've heard it both ways. Uh, without further ado, um, Rick Toker is going to pass out prayer cards. Anybody who needs prayer... Um, please put up your hand. We'll pass out a prayer card, and you can just uh, leave it on the table uh, next to the offering um, receptacle, and I'll pray for the offering now and beginning. Father God, just thank you, Lord, for bringing us together this morning and giving us a chance to give back. Uh, pray that you uh, lead us to give appropriately, Lord, uh, to, uh, to support your body, God, in Jesus' name. Uh, so uh, our, our regular announcements, Friday night, live here, R&R, 7 p.m., right here with food, music, and a wonderful message and brothership, uh, uh, fellowship. Uh, and then Friday, AA meeting at 6 p.m., which is an hour before R&R starts in the upper, up in the upper room. Uh, that's a, a good AA meeting. And on Tuesday nights, we have a life recovery Bible study. And right now we're in the middle of doing a sur uh, serenity prayer devotionals. And that's uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. The link is on your, uh, is on the handout. And then Thursday night, uh, the co-ed, both are co-ed, co-ed Bible study that Andy leads at 6.30 p.m. That's the challenging thing. I always want to go to that, but all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's already 7. I'm already late. <laughs> uh, so that's uh, Thursday nights at 6.30. And uh, we have showers. Anyone who needs a shower or, or know somebody who needs to have a shower, we have a shower program, which is a... What are you trying to say? No, no, no. It, it, no it's, it's, a, it's a real... If you know people are homeless and, and it's hard for them to know time, I, I got... There used to be a... Two, I think it's still there in Sunnyvale. It, Tuesdays at noontime, and it's hard to, for people to know when they are. So pass the word along. Uh, showers here Sunday at four to six, and then they have a dinner right after at six, uh, which is pretty cool. And then weekday showers are Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at eight to eleven. And we still have some R and R T-shirts available. Do we have a have a we have one? You can see Dave. They look really great. <laughs> This is the this is the forest green, but they also come in other colors. Ocean blue. Yeah. Uh, the offering box, as I mentioned, is available right over there uh, for your convenience at the check-in table. Uh, and our big event now we're really getting up to it is going to be next Saturday, the car show. If you notice coming in, you got to see the new the, the car show sign. Are you guys going to clap, Ron? Yeah. Because it's worthy of clapping. <laughs> so October 2nd, those of you who are, are volunteers, um, make sure you know when and where to show up. I was out of town last week, so I didn't attend that meeting. Uh, I'm assuming everybody knows when and where to go. So that's going to, if you know someone who has a great car or motorcycle that could be shown, see Dave at registration, at the registration, uh, at the, uh, after, after the service. Uh, is there any final words on that okay let's let dave do us yeah uh so obviously we want everybody to come because this is a we're, we're going to be ambassadors for christ ambassadors for this ministry ambassadors for this community very important this is outreach that's the main purpose of this is outreach so uh if you're a volunteer um your arrival time is going to be at 8 45 because what we want to do uh unless you're know already that you're supposed to be here earlier but 8 45 because we want to take some pictures of everybody you know with their gear on their t-shirts and hats and stuff so we want to get that out of the way um also uh, you need to watch your email very carefully this week because there's going to be a lot of specific information about assignments and stuff for volunteers <clears throat> so don't pick this as the week not to look at your email okay <laughs> it wouldn't be a good idea <laughs> This is David, David's baby, uh, and he's, he, from conception to now, and I can tell it's, it's, a, it's a lot of stress for him, and uh, we, wanna, we pray that it goes off well. 
because uh, we really do. We want it's our chance to minister to our neighbors and let them see you know a little bit. They, we have you know one neighbor who lets us know he can hear music here. And hopefully, they, hopefully people like him come and realize that you know we're just we're trying to do good things for Christ here. Uh, I want to lift up our sister Gay. Not only is she going to be doing our scripture reading today, but you know she's recently recovered from a hospital stay, and it's just a blessing to have you here. And she does. She does so much for, for the food at R and R. She's behind the scenes more than you think. And uh, so today we're going to welcome her as we kick off our Book of Romans, which is something we've been long awaiting. Uh, she's going to read our first uh, verses from Romans. Thank you. I want you to understand, though. Um, I always get credit for doing the meals. I simply serve the meals. There's a whole crew in the kitchen who prepares the meals ahead of time. And they're the ones that are really behind the scenes. So um, they faithfully come every Friday and Amen. supply exactly. these delicious meals. So thank you. And if any of you are interested in helping out on Fridays, give Dave or uh, Bruce a call and um, they'll get in touch with me. So thank you. <clears throat> okay, so this morning we're going to read, um, we're starting the book of Romans, which for me was sort of the answer to every question I ever had about being a Christian. Um, and um, I want you to know that on in your copy, the front page is all correct, but uh, due to uh, technical difficulty, the words from last oh, week. Dave's mistake. No, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> Dave does this faithfully every us. week. Yeah, Dave yeah, does this, yeah, and I mean, I have no complaints. <laughs> It's so nice to have this every week from Dave. So let's give Dave a welcome. Thank you for doing this. Even if it's wrong. Even if it's wrong, right. But I, I have the right thing because I printed it out myself. So. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Romans uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. This is the English Standard Version. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations including you who are called to belong to Jesus Amen. Christ to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. first I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers asking that somehow by God's will I may now at last succeed in coming to you for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you all who also are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. It is now our great privilege to introduce oh, our speaker, <laughs> Bruce. And my uh, question: Do you want to do on a mic stand? Uh, probably a stand would be better. Um, I got notes. I'm note down this morning. Is this, so. is this on? Thank you. No. Thank you, Gabe. No. Let's give Gabe a hand, everyone. Yay! Hey. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pretty loud usually, anyway. So. Whew. All right. Um, you know, I wanted to thank Bob uh, for bringing the food this morning. Let's give Bob a hand, everybody. Um, and he's, um, he's doing it for Stan because Stan's um, Stan did it for years. So I want to give Stan a hand for all the times that he did it. And um, so you know, Bob stepped up to do this, and we're starting out small, and then we'll see what happens, right? So it's good to have food here. 
Um, good morning, everybody. If you don't know already, my name is Bruce. I'll be bringing the message today on Romans. And oh my goodness, what a what a privilege! And um, it's a privilege, and it's um, scary all at the same time <laughs> because it's such wonderful stuff that that you know. Part of it is is I want to do I want to do it justice. I want to do God's words justice. And you know, these first seventeen verses are just packed. I mean, if you look at the, let me pray. <laughs> Get ahead of myself here. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for Romans. Thank you for um, the power that it has, that the, 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 the lives that it's changed through, um, through, what it, for, through what your message says in there, Lord. Thank you for Paul, the great apostle Paul. Um, thank you for these words that are for us, not only for 2,000 years ago, but for us today. Um, and so, Lord, I just pray that you would empower me. Uh, be my voice, Lord. Speak through me. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, you know, when I first saw this, I was, yeah, I was so, I've been wanting to do Romans here for a long, long time. And, um, and, and then, you know, when I saw these 17 verses, I'm going, be careful what you pray for. Right? <laughs> because, it, I mean, if you look at this thing, you know, there was no punctuation in, in, the, uh, in the first transcripts. But even if we've added, uh, we added punctuation, there's not a period until after the seventh verse. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's like, how do you, I mean, this is kind of like how I talk sometimes, right? No, no, but, that, but I don't have a period anywhere. Um, and, and you just imagine the, these thoughts are just going through Paul's head. He just, he, he needs to get it down. And you imagine if you're the guy that wrote it for him, how, how you know, oh my goodness, I'm going to write all this stuff. You had to write it so fast probably because it was just coming out of Paul. Um, and, I, and I pray that these words would come out of me that would be from God, not from me. Um, so I'm going to read this first sentence here. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who is descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Christ Jesus, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. Is that a mouthful or what? Yeah. I mean, come on, that's just a mouthful right there. Um, I, you know, I've written some letters more like, you know, Dear Bob, right? That's about, it. That's about the, the extent of my introduction. Um, but, you know, this is quite the introduction. And, and I want to break it down a little bit, but first let me give you some background. Let's do some background on Romans. Did I forget my water? I did. Let me grab my water because I don't have it. Thank you. For some reason, when I teach the Word of God, I, I, I get nervous. I get It's not nervous. I guess it's just because it's so important that um, I, 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 I can feel like God flowing through me. I can feel the Spirit flowing through me, and it just throws my whole body off, but it's great. So... I'd, I'd rather do nothing else than this. Amen. Um, so Romans, the epistle, obviously, is to the Romans, right? It's written to the Romans, um, written to Christians that are residing in the city of Rome. Um, about this time, there's about a million people in the city of Rome. That's the estimates, at least. And it's estimated there was between 40 and 50,000 Jews in the city. I think that's a low estimate. I think there was more than that, but I don't know. I don't have the... Uh, the uh, almanac that tells me that right um but the, and, and it's not clear how the church started in rome paul never had never been there he wrote to this church he had never been there he wanted to go there but he never he's never been there so you have to wonder how did the church start right it just started with you know i mean you could somebody from here could come and, and hear the gospel and go off and start a church somewhere else i mean that's that's what happened it had to have happened because he didn't start it right um so the best explanation is that uh, romans were Maybe there were Romans present at the Pentecost. It could have happened in Asia, Greece, or anywhere else that somebody, you know, that somebody heard the gospel, caught on fire, and went and spread it, right? Started a church in Rome. And, and, it, and you know, it, the thing is, is that, you know, what draws people to hear? That what draws people to hear? It's the word. It's the faith. It's the, it's the watching the saints grow and be and, and live in the power of God. 
That's what's attractive in this place. It's not me, I'll tell you that. I remember early on, I was going, Andy, there's, some, there's a lot of women paying attention to me. This is before I got married. And uh, I'm like, that's kind of weird. And he's all, Bruce, it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. And he's like, Darn, I thought it was me. I was all looking at the mirror. Going, it's me, no, it wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit living in me. So, yes. Yes, quickly. Nathan just said how it happened in Rome. He said it was the power of God. It wasn't Paul that did all these things. That's God, right. Thank God you. God was working through Paul. Thank you. God, God did this in Rome. We don't know who he worked through, but God did it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. You're actually here. Let me give you the notes. You do that, man. You do that better than me. Um, so, we don't know how it started, but Paul addresses both groups. He addresses the Jews and he addresses the Gentiles or the Greeks, or whatever name you want to give them. Um, so, Paul is the author of 13 New, New Testament epistles was born as an Israelite in Tarsus of Cilicia. Cilicia. There you go. That's how you say it. Um, I practiced that word and I still messed up. The name he went by was Saul. He stuttered on, under Gamaliel in Jerusalem and became a Pharisee. He was present at the stoning of Stephen. He became a persecutor of the church. He became, he started killing people that profess the faith that we profess. Um, thank goodness we don't have to deal with that, right? Um, we're very fortunate we don't have to deal with it yet. Um, so while he was, you know, rounding up Christians, uh, he was converted on the road to Damascus as Christ appeared to him. He just had this moment that changed everything. He completely changed him from the person he was to someone else, just like me. Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened to a whole bunch of people here. Um, and I wish I could say that I was, I wish I could have changed these things myself. I tried, I tried, I tried. Um, and I could not change the things I wanted to change in my life. And uh, God got a hold of me, and the, and the rest is history. Amen. This, you know, I, I thought I knew Romans really well, and I thought, oh my goodness, as I was studying this, I guess I really don't know this that great. Um, but, uh, you know, because Paul, they claim, had some problem with his eyes, he had people write these Gospels for him. And it even says it here in, uh, in um, chapter 16, verse 22, um, he had uh, Tertius, Tertius is the one who wrote this for him. Well, I never knew that, right? It, this is what's cool about studying the Word of God. You, you, you go deeper and you start finding out things you never knew. I had no clue. I had no clue that they said who wrote it. Real quick, was this after he had seen Jesus? I mean, because the light, uh, or was it... When? When he wrote right here? No, for... for for his eyes. I mean, was he always... Did he no, always... I think it was always a problem for him. Remember when he talked about... Um, uh, having a thorn in the flesh, people think that's what it was. Was he had uh, bad eyesight? We don't know for sure. But that's mind. what we think. So, or he just couldn't write. His thoughts came out so fast. He had to have someone write it for him. I don't know. They, they, no one really knows. Um, so he wrote the letter from the city of Corinth while he was on his third missionary journey. Um, and this was when he was gathering the offering to bring to Jerusalem. And so he was planning on going to Jerusalem, then go to Rome. Um, he does end up in Rome, but not the way he expected to end up there, right? Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So it was written around somewhere between 55, 57 um, AD, somewhere around there. Some say 56, some say 57, some, you know. So somewhere around there, um, a long time ago. Let's say it that way, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, so he's, he's writing to a church he never visited. Um, and, and here he wasn't, you know, like when you read like Ephesians and Corinthians and you, you read some of these epistles, he's responding to problems in most of them. Especially Corinthians, the uh, first and second Corinthians, he hears problems and he's and he's given out solutions to them, how we're supposed to handle them, how we're supposed to handle people and stuff like that. But there, he's basically just laying out um, the doctrine of salvation. It's, it's the main thing here is that he's showing what what does it really mean to have faith in Christ. This is what the book of Romans is: is what does it really look like? What does it really mean? What does the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ really mean for you and me? Right. What does it mean for people living in a dark world, in a, in a world that's full of evil and darkness? Um, and it's getting worse. I mean, I, I, I'm reading the, the news. I look at the news and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need this more than anything. Because yeah. everything else is garbage, right? Yeah. This is the only thing that matters. Amen. This is the only thing that matters. Um, this guy, Anders Nygren, wrote this, the Swedish Lutheran theolo theologian. Step by step, persistently and consistently, he hews his way through the flood of thoughts which present themselves to him as he undertakes to explain the meaning of God's work in Christ. 
talk about the book of Romans. It is theologically richest of all his letters and has played an instrumental role in the many movements, many great movements of the Christian church, right? For instance, we all know the, the main one everyone first thinks of is Martin Luther, right? It's Martin Luther. This, the Romans is what turned him around. What, you know, if you ever watch the movie Luther and he's like, he's like beating himself, right? He would take a thing and whip himself because of the badness in him, because of the sin in him. He would do that and, his, and lay down prostate on the floor for hours feeling like full of guilt and shame and God how can I I'm not worthy of you and all this stuff and then he finds out about Romans and boom that changes everything yeah. you know because we think we need to be we need to become righteous to have the power of God but that's backwards God gives us the power of God we accept the power of God then it changes us right it, it's not the other way around it's um it's uh because we try to do good we try to to line up to God's will. We try to live up to God's plan and we can't do it. And that's what Martin Luther did. And finally he realized it's not up to me. That's not God's plan. God's plan isn't for me to do my best to meet his standard. That's not God's plan. God's plan, he has another way, right? John Wesley, with his brother Charles, founder of the Methodist movement, said his heart was strangely warmed as he heard the truths of Romans set forth. There followed through him the great evangelical awakening that saved England from the fate of France and arrested the decay of English life, completely altering the history of the world again. Decay of life. Can you relate to that? The decay of life? And my life was so decayed when I came here to PBC the first time. Uh, man, I'll tell you, it's just, I'm not, I'm going to not go there because I'm going to cry again. <laughs> I don't want to do that. John Calvin said of the <clears throat> book of Romans, when anyone understands this epistle, he has a passage open to him to the understanding of the whole scripture. It's pretty pretty bold what he said right there. And this other guy here, Samuel Coleridge, English poet and literary critic, said Paul's letter to the Romans is the most profound work in existence. Now, if you um, re read Ray Stedman, he talks about the Constitution and what a great document that is for, for us here in the United States for the freedoms it lays out, um, which is under attack, by the way. Um, and but the thing is, it's of man. I mean, it, God was, you know, inspired these guys, but but it, it was a great document, but it doesn't even hold a candle to the gospel. It doesn't hold a candle to it. it doesn't hold a candle to Romans, to the gospel, to the, uh, to the um, writings of Romans. So here's the thing is, is it's kind of broken up into three parts here, uh, Romans. And so first I'm going to do today the introduction and the theme that the gospel is God's power for salvation. It shows us that the righteousness of God is through faith in all who believe in Christ. That's what makes us righteous. Not me doing the right thing, not me following the rules, not me, nothing else other than believing in Christ, that he did for me what he said he did. That's all it is. It, it, we don't have to make it any more complicated than that. We, we look to Christ for everything, right? Um, then the next seven chapters spells out the results of justification by faith in terms of both present experience and future hope. Um, and then he goes in chapters 9 to 11, uh, expresses the sorrow that many of his fellow Israelites have not embraced the gospel. That must be really hard. It's kind of like our family, right? We have family members that we want so bad to know the gospel. They want nothing to do with it. As a matter of fact, they treat us badly when we talk about it, right? Um, that's what he's talking about here. They, he's, he, you know, his brothers, he wants his brothers to know. I want my friends to know. And instead, they look at me like I'm some fanatic, right? Some nut job. What? You're a pastor? Oh, you're one of those nut jobs, huh? <laughs> yes, I am. I am a nut job, I will say. And then the last uh, 12 to 16, he concludes by describing how the gospel should affect, every, affect everyone's everyday life, right? How do, how do we live this out every day? Um, it's, it sounds easy, but it's not. It's, it's hard. It's kind of like the 12 steps. It's, it's simple, but not easy, right? It's simple but not easy. Um, and so I, I was fighting and fighting to figure out what I was going to call this message. Um, and um, I came up with this. Um, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God. Right? That's the only thing that makes us righteous is, is our belief in Christ, is our surrendering to Christ. Not just belief, but active belief, active faith, actually surrender to him, letting him run our lives. Let him, him run my life. Um, so I got three points here that I want to cover on this introduction. First is that Jesus is Lord. All right. This is the central fact of Romans, that Jesus is Lord. 
right? What does that mean? It means Jesus is God. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is the creator. That's who Jesus is. That's the main theme of this. Um, so Jesus is Lord, the heart of the gospel. That's the heart of the gospel, right? Um, I have one of the questions I have in our thing, something about how would you um, tell a non-believer the gospel? That's one of my questions I put down. And you know, it, 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 it sounds like an easy question. How would you explain the gospel to an unbeliever? I'll tell you, it, it's hard. It, it's hard. And um, because we don't like rejection. I don't like rejection. It's hard to give a message like that. Um, but something in me, you know, something in me has has driven me to do this. What am I doing up here? Teaching the Bible. What, what happens, you know? Seriously, what am I doing up here? And 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 it explains it. Yes. I think the best way to show somebody is by example. Man. That's right. The life. The life is what matters. Sorry. I forgot your name. It's been so long since I've seen you. David. David. Sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I hate when I do that. All right. So Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Same thing, right? Christ in me. That's the, that's the key. That's what makes me righteous. Christ in me. And it's not a, it's not a religion, right? This is because people think I don't want to have nothing to do with religion. No, it's not a religion. That's not what I'm telling you. This is not a religion. It's a person. It's a savior. It's a redeemer. It's a person, not a doctrine. It's not like, oh, you know, follow this doctrine. No, follow this man, God. Follow Jesus. That's what it's about. It's not following some code. It's following a person. It's following Jesus. And it, it's easy. It's uh, It starts out hard because you're going, I don't see the person, right? But you see what he does. You see the, just like the wind. You don't see the wind, but you see its effect, right? Just like I see the power of God in my life. I see it all around me. In this, being in this ministry for 17 years, I've seen the power of God like crazy. Amen. Um, so let me read this verse again. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. First off, he calls himself a servant first, not an apostle. Same thing Peter did, remember? He didn't consider himself an apostle first. Because, I, you know, personally, you know, my flesh would say, I'm an apostle. I'd be walking around, I'm an apostle. <laughs> right? Seriously. Um, or, you know, I'm a pastor. I don't ever do that. I don't. If I ever do that, slap me, please. Or, something. <laughs> do something. or spray water on me or something. Seriously. So he says, right? So he's he's a servant of Christ, a slave. Amen. One who gives yes. himself up to another's will. Those whose service is used by Christ in extending and advancing his cause among men. That's what a servant of Christ does. That's what we're called to do. Called to be an apostle, a messenger. Called, meaning invited by God. Divinely selected and, appoint, and appointed. And you know, when I was doing this, I was do, preparing for this, I'm going... I was called to do this. Why? Because I'm like, why am I doing this? Because I was called. It wasn't something, oh, someday I want to go and teach the Bible somewhere. No, that was not my goal. Um, God called me somehow. He, cha he changed me, and, and here I am. <laughs> Nothing I did. Set apart for the gospel of God. Call, Paul talking about himself. He set apart, separated, separated for a purpose, different than everyone else. <sighs> set apart just for the gospel of God. Set apart for the gospel of God, the good news, the glad tidings of salvation through Christ. That's what that means. So <laughs> then he says, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So this was promised beforehand. It was, it's not like this, you know, it, it wasn't um, expected because God said this was going to happen, right? In his word, he said it. If I can find this thing I just did. There we go. says this in, in uh, Samuel, 2 Samuel. Um, well, actually, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a, a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. God with us, what that means, right? That So he set apart to, 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 to um, preach to everyone that Jesus is here. The promised Messiah is here. And you need to wrap your life around him. You need to surrender your life to him. So, so he set apart for the gospel, which was promised beforehand in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son. Who was descended from David according to the flesh. And uh, that's an answer to uh, prophecy, right? Descended from David. Here in 2 Samuel uh, 7, 12, and 13, it says, When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. 
He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Right? And then that's fulfilled, uh, talking about it in Matthew, beginning of Matthew. This is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So, you know, yes, Nathan. Daniel what? No, that was... Uh, that was Second Samuel, Samuel 2 Samuel. seven twelve to thirteen. So, you know, he, it was promised beforehand in the scriptures that he was going to come from the line of David, right? And as a matter of fact, it goes all the way back to Abraham. That was promised that all his descendants, that he, you know, he was going to have all these millions of his descendants. So it goes all the way back. It goes all the way back to um, to uh, dirt. <laughs> it goes all the way back, way, way, way. Um, but so, so it's saying that he is man, right? It's basically saying concerning his son who was man, according to the flesh. He was a descendant of man. Okay, so he got that part and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Oh my goodness, what a sentence that is. Or part of a sentence. Um, and was declared to be the son of God, right? In power according to the spirit of his holiness. So he's a descendant of David human nature from human nature fully man but he's also the son of god unmistakably deity fully god but he laid aside his deity right he laid aside that he had it it was there he could grab it anytime he wanted but he laid it aside because he wanted to show us that how to live he wanted to show us how to live this life how to live this life of the gospel how to live this life of surrender to jesus christ because he's man, he's fully man but he's fully god and he was able to walk through this he came to act as a man filled with God, right? We can live on that same basis. We have the ability to do that, which is awesome, right? Which is, I mean, <laughs> I can I can live full of God and, and have real life. And all this other garbage that I do in my life, that, that it's just a waste of time, right? Living on the basis filled with God is the only way to live. It's the most exciting life you could possibly have. And this is what... This is what we want here is people to go, oh my goodness, I got to have that. I got to have that, right? Because we're so sold out. Now, if you say you're sold out for Christ, but you, and you don't live a godly life, then your word's worthless, right? You need to actually live this out. We need to live this out, not by our own power, but according to his power. So, so um, he was declared to be the son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit by his resurrection from the dead, by raising from the dead, coming from the dead. Yes, Tom. Um, well... You struck a thought in me that uh, I run into this not only with people I deal with, but within myself, too. And that is trying to figure out whether you're being righteous in God or whether you're being self-righteous. And um, sometimes you find your I find myself thinking I'm doing this for the right reasons. And I'm finding out that, oh, wait a minute. It's just because I didn't like the way this person was doing it. Not, you know, it, it had all to do with how I felt about it, not what God feels about. Did you see my dilemma? Uh, thank you. Uh, question, discussion question four says this, where are the moments in your life when you tend to depend on your own righteousness? We all do it, right? That's, 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 where, that's when life stops happening. When we're starting to do it in our own strength. We're trying to do things on our own. That's not real life. Real life is being indwelt by God, running on his power. That's the way we were created to do so his deity was proved by the resurrection, right? It's like no one's ever overcome death before, and he did. Okay, <laughs> spirit of his holiness, resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Proven. He came back from the dead. That's never happened before. Through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations. So we're called... Oh, and then the last sentence says, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Everybody here that's coming here, is, it, we're called. We're called to belong Amen. to Jesus. Amen. Not called to, um, you know, <clears throat> say his name. We're called to belong to him. That, that means, we, we're, <laughs> right, we don't belong to ourselves. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Mm -hmm. So um, that's us, including you who are called to belong to Christ Jesus. So he's... He, He's the great apostle Paul is equating us with himself that we were called as well. Now we may not be an apostle, but we may have, we have something else that, that God wants us to do in this world. He wants us to go to the ends of the earth and spread this stuff starting in our homes. Right. Um, but that doesn't always work. Right. 
Verse 7, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. You ever thought of yourself as a saint? You were called to be saints, right? It, it, you know, it, you think saint, you think there's like a halo, you know, floating around and stuff, right? Um, but that's what we are. We're saints, right? And, and you, you look, um, there's, there's some uh, churches that, you know, they raise up only the saints, the saints of certain saints, right? Paul, Peter, all these. But we're saints right along with them. We have to think of ourselves that way. Oh, yes, Julie, I'm sorry. Doesn't saint just mean holy one? Holy, separated from sin, therefore consecrated to God, free from defilement. Yeah, so I would think all Christians are supposed to be like that. Yeah, that's what yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. Um, complete, right? Complete. Well, I don't know if I'll ever be completed in my flesh, but that's, right. that's my calling, you know. The work, the work, the work uh, of God is complete, right? Our work is not complete yet. Uh, we had a little bit of a disagreement in our discipleship group about that um but oh yes yes right so we are called to be saints um but the thing is, is that the new creation comes in us it's right next to the old creation the old flesh and so we, we we have to draw on the new creation um and no more on the flesh but in our own strength right to all those in rome who are loved by god god and called to be saints so that's that's us too it's not just rome it goes you know from paul the Romans to us and then we take it out to other people so it doesn't stop it keeps going it never stops it goes to the ends of the earth Amen. grace to you and peace grace divine favor undeserved love unmerited favor gives that to us right what do you believe I believe you get it and peace tranquility harmony rest and contentment oh my goodness how many people feel content on a regular basis Okay. Well, we're called. We, we we have the ability to be content all the time if we if we follow God. If we if Jesus is our Lord, right? So we're called to belong to Christ. We're called to be saints. And then he goes on to say, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. Talking about the Romans, the believers in Rome, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. And that's yes, yes. Hey Ruth. Yes, sir. Uh, you no, know, nobody dares. Nobody is perfected. Okay. I'll give you an example. I, I was lucky and blessed enough to meet Muhammad Ali when I was a kid, right? Oh, wow. He was vil vilified, all right? And then he was glorified. I mean, hey, known all over the world. But look how people treated him initially. Right, but and we're going to be treated the same way. As believers in Christ, we're going we're gonna to be treated the same way. The only time when, that, when that's going to be made right is when Christ comes back again. And he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't afraid to be who he was. So. That, that's right. But he's still a broken sinner like the rest of us. Well, everybody until, is. That's right. Until we meet Christ, right? Until we're in heaven with Christ. We're all that way, right? Um, and we're all broken. And we're all, we're all broken in different ways. But we just have to admit that. And we have to surrender to God. Surrender going, yes, I am. Without you, God, I'm nothing. Yes, David. They only hate us Christians because well, they can't beat us. What's that? They said they only hate us Christians because they can't beat us. I don't want to get into that. It, 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 it's look, we're, we're called to be humble servants of God. Not, you know, we're supposed to be proud of the gospel, but we're not supposed to go around acting like we're better than others, right. or, or you know, saying that you're less than me. Wait a minute, I, I came in here a, a broken drug addict, crawled in here, useless, wanted to kill myself, and God changed that. Not nothing I did. It's what He did, and what He did in my life, right? To to, to a broken drug addict loser to preaching this gospel. And without him, I'm still a loser, right, as far as I'm concerned. Without him. So he says, uh, I thank God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. And that's what the church is supposed to do. Is people are supposed to see our faith and be drawn to us. That's what we're supposed to do. And that's what was happening in Rome. They were drawn to him. That was like the, that was probably the um, evil capital of the world. I mean, it was where, you know, it was it was just all man and all flesh and all that kind of stuff right except for the gospel the only thing that was in there that was of god was the gospel right um so he says uh for god is my witness saying basically i swear to god <laughs> whom i serve he's just saying i'm not lying here who whom i serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing i mention you Amen. and you know i don't know if i could always say that because i'll tell people oh yeah i'll pray for you and then later i remember oh, i didn't pray for that person when i said i would you know and we have to remember when, when we're 
when we say we're going to pray for someone, we really need to do it. We need to write it on a list. I have like 10 different lists on my desk. I need to pray for these people. And, uh, but, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Are we praying? Um, are we praying for this, for the gospel? Are we praying for this ministry? We should be. And uh, Virginia has prayer meeting every week. And um, sometimes I get so caught up in doing details of the ministry that I, I don't make the prayer meeting. And that's the lifeblood of this ministry is prayer. We should pray. So he's saying, I pray for you all the time. So remember in your prayers, when you're at home, when you're doing things, just pray for this ministry. Pray for this. Because, um, you know, we could lose this real easily. And yes. we need to make sure we hold on to this with everything we have. Amen. right? With all the faith we have, with all the strength um, that we have, we need to hold on to this thing. Um, because, you know, the persecution is coming. It's going to get worse and worse as time goes on. And we need to have a full hold of this Amen. faith. So that... You know, when I went to Pakistan, uh, the first time they said, let's go to Pakistan. I'm like, you crazy. No way. I'm going to Pakistan. You're crazy. So I was disciple for a year, and I went the next year, and he invited us again. I said, yes, I'll go. And what happened there, right? And, and, and I thought to myself, what's the worst could happen? Some guy standing over me with a big sword ready to cut my head off, asking me to denounce my faith. Seriously, that's what I've, I took it that far. I think most of us will when we're going to go do that. And I said, yes, I can do that. I can do that. Wow, my goodness. Do you believe that I actually thought that out and said, if they were, can I do that? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Because I'm not going to turn away from my God. Amen. Now, it's easy to say that, right? Because it didn't happen, right? I didn't have a hood on my head all that stuff. But that was the worst case scenario as far as I was concerned. And I said, yes, I can. Always in my prayers, asking that somehow, by God's will, I may now last succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you that I may impart some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other, by each other's faith, both yours and mine. So he's not only just saying that I want to come to bless you, but I want to be blessed by you. And that's, you know, for me, as the, as the brother's home manager, I was more blessed than anybody in that place. Teaching the word right now, I'm getting more blessed than anybody right now. Um, and, 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 and it's, I want to bless people, but I also want to be blessed by doing this, by by sharing what I know, sharing what I've experienced. Not something that someone told me, it's something that I've experienced in my life. From death to life. I came from death to life. It, 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 it's the simplest way to put it. So, uh, he continually prays for them. He longs to encourage and be encouraged by them. He wants to share his gifts and partake of their gifts to grow their faith together. Right? It's funny, it says here um, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. He's not saying which one it is. He's not saying, my spiritual gift of leadership is coming to bless you, right? No, it's not what he's saying. He's saying, whatever gifting I have, God's going to put in front of me how he wants me to bless you Amen. when I get there, right? Just be there. Just show up. I don't know how he's going to bless me. You know, do you want, I was so nervous today coming to teach. And I'm like, oh, no, no. Stop it. It's not up to you. It's not up to you. Um, it's about God. It's not about me. And then he goes on to say, right, so he wants to be mutually encouraged. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented. In order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. He's just saying, look, I've been trying to come to you, but God just hasn't made the way for me to get there yet. Um, and little does he know, God is planning a way what he, how he gets there. He's going to end up there in chains, but he does get there, right? Um, so he says this, um, I, I want to come to you guys, I want to reap some harvest, I want to sp spread the gospel to get more people to come in, get more people to come to Christ. Um, and it's not about him though, it's not like I want to go be you know, glorified by bringing people to Christ. No, he wants to go there that I can reap some of the harvest. Because, I mean, you know when you see someone's life change in front of you, it's the most awesome thing to see. I've seen it in guys in the brother's home, I've seen it R&R, I've seen it in my own life. Um, it's something to see. It's something to behold, right? To see death or life come out of death. It's something to behold. Um, it says this, So I'm eager to preach the gospel to you who also who are in Rome. Now, <laughs> i got to read this for, uh, I think this is Spurgeon. Uh, actually, Newell first says this, This boldness talking. This is boldness talking. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. He says this, This is boldness talking. Talk of your brave men, your great men. Oh, world, where in all history can you find one like Paul? Alexander, Caesar, Napoleon marched with the protection of their armies to enforce their will upon men. 
Paul was eager to march with Christ alone to the center of this world's greatest entrenched under Satan. To the center of this world's greatest entrenched under Satan. That doesn't make sense. Okay, I want to read that. I didn't, I didn't write that. <laughs> with the word of the cross, which he himself says is to the Jews an offense, to the Gentiles foolishness. Right? It's a Jewish people, it's, it offends them. And to Gentiles, you're just a bunch of fools. That's what we run into, right? Oh, you, you Christians are a bunch of fools. You're weird. And you're, you're crazy and all that. You're, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, crazy, that's the best I could do. You're zealots. Uh, yeah, lunatic. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> lunatic. So here's the thing. Ironically, in the mystery of God's irony, right? He's saying, um, eager to preach the gospel to you in Rome. I want to come to you guys. This is what Spurgeon says. I do not suppose that Paul guessed that he would be sent there at the government's expense, but was. <laughs> the Roman Empire had to find a ship for him and a fit escort for him too. And he entered the city as an ambassador in bonds. So he, he prayed for God to bring his own. Oh, not yet, I want to bring you there. And they brings him in chains. He entered the city as an, an ambassador in bonds. When our hearts are set on a thing, we pray for it. God may grant us the blessing, but it may be in a way that we never looked for. Amen. We shall go to Rome, Paul. You shall go to Rome, Paul, but you shall go in chains. Wow. Yes. So when we're praying for stuff, I mean, like, you know, sometimes I'm like, Lord, do what you will to make me righteous. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> right? You never know what that might include. That might include going to prison, um, having a having a um, an ailment, um, a deathly ailment. And also, it could be anything, a whole bunch of things. But I, that's why right now, while I've got my senses, I want I'm, I'm eager um along with Paul to preach the gospel to anybody that I can and, and I fall short in this I do I mean it's, you know going I'm you know because I have all believers here we're all believe the same thing but if I had a group of people that didn't believe and were skeptical about this stuff I wouldn't be so comfortable right here um and so part of it is you know it's not about being comfortable it's about following God and and we're not supposed to be comfortable in our own strength we're supposed to rely on him to do it right oh my goodness so we're called to belong to Christ and called to be saints. Don't forget that, that you're a saint. If you're a believer in Christ, Amen. you're a follower of Christ, you're a saint. Amen. So he says this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power. Verse 16. What am I doing on time here? I'm doing good. So I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. I'm going to stop there for a minute. I'm not ashamed. As a matter of fact, he's proud of it. He's proud Thank of the gospel. Amen. He's not proud of him having it all together. He's proud of the gospel. He's proud Amen. that he's been um, blessed to know the gospel. He's been blessed to give the gospel. He's been blessed Amen. to... Um, it's, it's, it's a privilege for us to do that, Amen. right? It's scary, but I tell you... Man, I tell you all the times that I've done things that I surely didn't think I could do. Yes, Virginia? Do, wait, hold on. Let me bring this over. Yeah. When you mentioned that, it stirs something in my heart when you say it's scary. It's scary at first, but by the power of God, you get used to it. And you get used to face it in the name of Jesus. I'm facing it, and I'm going to share the gospel with anyone. So when, when the Spirit tells you this person is Jesus, you just give it to them. Right. And, but the thing, is, the thing is, we have to have him. Yes. We have to Amen. live the gospel. We can't give it away if we don't have it. It says in, in the big book somewhere, we can't give, what we don't, we can't give away what we don't have. So we need to grasp this and grab a hold of this with everything we have, right? Um, but I know there's football later. So uh, <laughs> uh, I don't watch football, but but um, but there's other things, right? Doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with watching a game, but you know, I was so obsessed with sports. It was like every day I was like, what's what's the score? What's the score? Who's what's the standing? What's what? Even now I'm I because I can't stand the Dodgers. Hey, 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 h
is that we put a lot of things before God, before something that's way important. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm in the middle of watching a game or obsessing over some thing that I, you know, uh, uh, and God comes, what am I going to do, right? It's like, I want to be about, about God's business. Like I said, I'm not, you know, look, it, I was there. I was, I was entrenched in every sport. I even got into hockey, believe it or not. <laughs> what? I didn't even understand the game. I'm like, ah, oh, offsides. I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Anyway. Sorry. So I don't know anything about it. I am not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. So you see people walking, you're going, that person's going to be lost and separated from God forever. That person that I just, that I'm too scared to talk to. This is the power of God that we're talking about. This can change their life. Even the people that are difficult, people that you don't like, we still need to go to them and tell them this is because I was the same way as the people I don't like. I was very unlikable. You didn't want me coming to your party or whatever, or in your house, or uh, uh, you know, attached to your finances whatsoever. Um, seriously, so we don't need to be ashamed of it. We need we need to be proud of the gospel. We have the God, the Creator of the universe, living inside of us, right? Then he says here, the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. What kind of power are we talking about? We're talking about miraculous power. Power. The word here is dunamis, means dynamite, right? It's power. It's it's like power that's like, power. what's that? Like the song says, wonder working power. Yes. Uh, divine power, resurrection power. The one that brings death from life. I mean, sorry, <laughs> life from death. I knew I was going to do that. I did that when I was practicing the other day too. Uh, no, you have to practice this. No, life out of death. That's resurrection power. Life that brings the death, life that comes out of death. Dead people coming to life. I've seen it over and over and over. There's a bunch of people here that's happened to, myself included. Um, so salvation to everyone who believes, right? It says power of God for salvation. It doesn't stop there. It says to everyone who believes, everyone who's in Christ, whoever has surrendered to Jesus Christ. The Jew first and also the Greek. Started with his own nation and he goes out, right? Just like us, we start with our family, shake the dust off because they're not responding and we go out somewhere else, right? Um Here's the cool thing. So he says, for in it, talking about the gospel, is the the righteousness of God is revealed. For in it, the gospel, the gospel, the righteousness righteousness of God is revealed. He says here a weird thing, from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Yes, say that again. Well, he's saying that, that the righteousness of God is revealed from faith. So in other words... We have faith. That's what reveals God, right? And then it's for faith, meaning it's going to grow our faith. We're going to continue to grow, continually grow our faith, right? It's going to be faith is what drew us. Faith is what's equipped us, and uh, and then it'll lead us to the power of living. Continued faith. Yes. So it, it, it comes from our faith, and then the outcome results in greater faith. I believe so, yes. I would. That's how I would put it. Not it, just for us, but other people. Absolutely. Oh. I believe so, yes. I mean, it, 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 there's other translations. As a matter of fact, I'll give you another translation. Yes, David. Hey, Bruce, what I'm taking away from this today is, uh, I think it's like, don't talk the talk if you don't walk the walk, you know? That's right. I mean, that's what I'm taking, you know? It's like, that's what I'm taking from this. That's right. We need to walk the walk. You're absolutely right. Let me see if I can give you another translation that was... Let me give you the New Living Translation, what it says. Um, 17. Because that 16. Uh, For I am not ashamed of the good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes. Did you... Oh, wait. 17. Oh, here we go. This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished by... Wait. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. Right, from start to finish. So that, so that it, we don't come to faith and now we've arrived. It's We, we come to faith and now we're, we're called to continue that faith, right? I think it's continually in faith, right? Because I have faith in Christ, but as I walk through my life and things are falling apart or things don't look the way they're supposed to, I have to have faith, right? But that came from the original faith that I had. Yes, that's, that is too big of a word for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That fourth dimension. Yes. So, but it says, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And that's come, uh, comes out of, um, I ha- let me, let me ask this up from Habakkuk. 
A back coup. Yeah, a back coup. I, I practiced, but I still messed up. Uh, two four says, "Behold, his soul is puffed up; it is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by faith." And then they quote this in Galatians three eleven, says, "Now that no one is justified by the law before God, it is evidence for the righteous one will live by faith." So we become righteous not by our actions, what we do. We become righteous by our faith in Christ. He changes our actions and makes them more holy and makes us align up with the will of God. And, of course, remember, we go all the way back to Genesis, which I got to teach. Genesis 15, 6 says this, And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. That's Abraham. So it's all the way back to Abraham, all the way up to us. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your word. Um, Lord, I, I, I pray that I did justice to your word because it's so wonderful and so powerful. and and just cuts to our heart, Lord. We pray, Lord, as uh, we don't just hear these things and know them in our head, but that we would go out and live them out. Amen. That we would remember how awesome this gift we have, this gift of the gospel, this gift of salvation that we didn't earn, but was given to us freely, Lord. Help us to continue to um, preach the gospel out there, Lord. And in, in, in not just our words, but in our actions. And Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Bruce. Yeah. 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 I, one of the, you know, this is one of the, the purest gospel, uh, this book, so it's one of those things you can follow along and be reading this at home in your Bible, because this, this, this series that we're doing is life-changing, and you just get Romans embedded inside of you, and you will learn how to tell other people. Uh, and we have a special thing we're going to do today. Our very beloved Bob is going to share his uh, testimony. Right, Bob. Hey, Bob. Right, Bob. Hi. Hi, Bob. 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 Hi, I have eight doctors, Bruce Hockey, and great nurses of they can care of me. Bring that closer, Bob. There you go. Yeah, thank you. I love my nurses to get me through chemotherapy. Amen. They give me everything I need to get through. Eleven years ago, you guys did that for me. I was sick. Only God can cure. Amen. We are saints. We are serpents. We're also post up nurses. We beat you. Bruce, Gavin, Andy, beat us the gospel. And when I first got here, yeah, but it's new French. <laughs> Honesty is funny. And we have beautiful people here, right? Morning, beating us every Friday night for me to touch the tea hands on. How are you feeling today? How are you doing? Say it in love, say it in honesty. Only God can heal, but we're the folks up. And I remember going to your house here to go with Larry, getting involved in 
level in our discipleship group and he's one of those guys who is a behind the scenes always doing stuff around here and never wants to bring attention to it so let's have a big hand for Bob thank you at this time we'll open up for sharing uh, Joey or William or both if you're lucky you'll get both of them we'll bring that we'll bring the microphone um, we, we got one in the back over here and then we'll come to Sabrina Carlos Carlos. Good morning, uh, family. Uh, my name is Carlos. I'm an addict and child of God. I want to share something uh, that happened in in the last two weeks. Uh, I know the Spirit's been putting in, in my thought, uh, but when Pastor Paul shared on R and R two weeks ago, he talked about pornography, and uh, and I, I know by, I, by I've been thinking about it before or after or you know when he said it, but. I know this week, uh, I had this terrible nightmare, and I woke up and that was on my head, because I've been like keeping secrets, this pornography, uh, and uh, the Spirit's convicting me. So I think it was the beginning of this week, uh, I don't know, it was Monday or Tuesday that it happened, but I was going to go to work the next day. So the end of that day... When I, uh, when I came back from uh, uh, from work that day, I was tired. I was laying down ready. I'm, I'm ready to go to sleep. Just go to sleep because I got to work in the morning. But I was still, it was still gnawing at me. And I go, get up. Get up, Carlos. Get on the computer. Because I do have a lot of pornography that I've been keeping secret. And, and I got to blame Bruce and... And he or created them for bringing me that message that to live righteously, I have to get rid of it. So I pulled myself up from the bed. I was so tired, but I still, you have to get up and do what you got to do and what the Spirit is leading you to do. So I erase everything on my computer. Hallelujah. And I... I still got something in my USB flash, but I'm going to look for it and get rid of it. I don't want it part of my life anymore. Uh, Sabrina's next, and then we'll get you, David. It's going to go in order, that's all. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sabrina. Hi, and Sabrina. there's two Hi, things that I am... Well, first of all, I want to thank Pastor Bruce for the message he sent. Um, there's one thing that kind of stand out to me, and... Um, 
He was talking about how you preaching to other people and they judge you. What I have learned that even if the person is judging you, at least you preach the message, the message to them. And the thing is, you can't change everybody. They have to do it to themselves. And I noticed half of the people that I had talked to about the Lord and stuff, they had changed and they were willing to change. But those who doesn't change, that's all right. God will accept them no matter what. And you know what? God has been blessing me right now. I have an interview with PetSmart tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So, so if you guys could keep me in prayer for that, I would really appreciate it. I will give you guys the update to let you guys know if I got the job or not tomorrow. Can we pray for Thank you, Lord, for this day. Uh, I lift Sabrina up to you. Uh, hear her humble request, Lord, and grant it. Give her, give her this job. Let it happen. Let it come to pass, and uh, let her give you glory for it. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And David. Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is David. U.S. Army veteran. Uh, thanks for serving, brother. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, um, anyway, I I'd like to thank Matt telling me that this was even happening again and uh i never forgot any of you because i have pictures of almost all of you from the retreat and uh nice. uh i'm really blessed to be here and uh, i really I, i'm really happy this is happening again uh, a lot of us lost friends and family and stuff and uh i'm sorry for that but god has never put anything on my plate that i couldn't handle and uh right, and everything happens for a reason and this pandemic helped me learn a lot of things about myself and about uh it helped me get into myself and you know all the shelter and stuff and the uh forced uh, isolation and stuff and it really opened my eyes to a lot of things and uh, my life has changed exponentially and I'd like to thank you all for being here you know because uh, you're my family you know and I love y'all and I've got I got pictures Bruce told me he hasn't lost weight I got pictures to prove he has you know <laughs> but that retreat was a lot bigger you know but anyway I, I love y'all and I'm really happy to be here and I'm elated inside and it's really good to see y'all I really God bless you thanks David we got, we, got, we got a time for just a real short one Andre hey, uh, Hey, Gavin, I just want to make a comment, one comment. So we talk about all these religions and stuff. You know what religion is? Religion is in the heart. That's it. You know, you don't have to even go to church and have a good heart. People come to, you know, to socialize and, you know, and get together and, you know, and try to become one. But religion is right here, buddy. Cool, are you thanks. with it or are you not? Cool. Short, short one, Susie. Sorry, champ. Run, run, William, Joey, run. Run, run. Champ wanted to say something. You guys cut him off. <laughs> William slash Joey. Well, Thank you, Susie. <laughs> you can do that to me. You can't do it to her. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Tell that to William. Okay, I'm going to make this real short, and the only reason I'm going to say this is because I felt like the Lord was telling me to say this because I was nervous to say this, but when Bruce said he went to Pakistan as a missionary, that gave me the uh, clue, or the cue, because, praise God, he went there because my son is going to be deployed there on Wednesday to the Gulf of Oman, which is right there by Pakistan so and Afghanistan it's surrounded by all those countries so I'm just praying dear God please keep him safe and that he will uh, be blessed and be getting a Bible study and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. but anyways and our, our military I mean I, I not just my son but there's supposedly 20 military boys that and girls probably that commit suicide every day. So just pray for our military and that their leaders will have wisdom. Amen. Amen. Can we pray for Susie's son right now? Thank you, Lord. We lift up Susie's son who's going. Joshua. Joshua, who is going to be deployed. I ask that you put a protection around him and all the other young men and women serving for us. Give him strength, give him encouragement, and give Susie and Tom peace of mind that he's going to be fine. And we give you praise and glory. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. So prayer cards could be turned in over on the table. There's a little a basket there that the prayer cards can be put in, and, and we'll have prayer warriors praying over those prayers throughout the week. And it's not too late to fill one out if you didn't get one. If something's come to mind, put it in there. I want to thank Bruce for a great teaching. <laughs> Kicking off Romans. And let's thank Tom and Ron for the wonderful worship. Ron and Tom. Ron and Tom. And our very own Bob for not only did a testimony, but but got the food here today, which is really nice. Oh, Father God, I just want to just put a blessing on each heart here today, Lord, as we go off through our week. Let us reflect you in our daily lives, Lord, and uh, help us to be um, willing servants, Father God, and to, uh, to do your will as you direct. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.